Hi everyone, my name is Ray Liu. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate at the uh, Division of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor. So the, the title of my talk is called Speeding Up Large Scale Recommendation System with Multi Arm Bandit. So some, some of you might notice that this, this title is different from your title uh, in your agenda because someone told me that my previous title is too long. So that's why I shortened it to make it more catchy. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so recommendation systems are quite popular nowadays because many companies, I think including Critio, are using recommendation systems as a key components in their products. Uh, for example, uh, Facebook is using a recommendation system to suggest friends to its users, and Amazon, eBay are using recommendation systems to uh, suggest uh, items for the user to buy, and uh, Netflix is also using a recommendation system to suggest movies for its user to watch. Uh, so the core part of any recommendation system is that among many items, we need to figure out uh, the best item to recommend for any given user. There are many ways to do this. Uh, a very popular way that I'm going to talk today is called embedding. So the key idea behind embedding is that we want to represent users and items by vectors of real numbers. For example, in this example, we represent a user by vector Q and item I by vector uh, VI. And all of them are in the capital N dimensional space. And in order to figure out which item to recommend for the user U, uh, we need to compute the inner products between the item vector and the user vector. And we will recommend the item that can achieve the highest inner product with the uh, query vector. So this approach seems very simple. However, if we are considering a large scale problem, for example, in Amazon, there are uh, hundreds of millions of products and users, then it's still too costly to figure out, I mean, the best item to recommend. So, so in this talk, I will focus on this problem and the propose a new method that can uh, solve this problem very efficiently. Uh, so uh, so the, the procedure I just described in last slide is so popular in many different machine learning applications and algorithms. So it even has a name to it. So it's called maximum inner product search. So the formal definition of MIPS uh, is as follows. So we are given a vector collection S, which consists of small n number of vectors from V1 to Vn. And each vector Vi is from a, a capital N dimension space. And we are also given a query vector Q from the same dimension space. And our, and our goal is to figure out the best, the optimum vector V star that I can achieve the highest unit product with the query vector Q. So in the setting of recommendation system, uh, query Q is the, is the vector embedding for the user, and uh, any vector VI from the set S is the vector embedding for any item I. So obviously, there is a naive approach to solve this problem. We can basically compute all inner products one after another and keep track of the uh, highest inner product, and then we can recommend that uh, uh, highest that item can that uh, with highest inner product. The time complexity of this naive approach is O of small n times n. So again, if we are faced with a large scale problem where the small n or large uh, capital N is very large, then it's still too costly to go with this naive approach. Then, basically, our goal in this talk is to propose a new method that can solve this uh, MIPS problem. Efficiently and approximately. Efficiently means that, of course, we want to get the solution fast, and approximately means that uh, instead of the accurate optimal solution V star, sometimes we are more interested in an approximate solution that is close enough to the optimal solution. This is because uh, in many applications or in practice, sometimes it's okay to you know, sacrifice the accuracy in order to get more speed up. Uh, so why MIPS problem is so important uh, in machine learning 
community. This is because it appears as an important sub-problem in many different machine learning algorithms and applications. So the recommendation system that I just talked about is just one example. It can also appear in uh, many other applications, for example, in multi-class prediction. <clears throat> so since our approach is based on multi-unbanded, before I dive into the details of our approach, I'd like to uh, talk about some background about multi-unbanded. So there are several different settings to multi-unbanded. And the, the particular setting that I'm going to use in this talk is called based arm identification with fixed confidence. So this fit, uh, in, under this setting, a user is repeatedly faced with small n number of actions. And also, uh, action is also called an arm in the banded literature. And every time the user pulls an arm, he will receive a numerical reward that is sampled with an unknown stationary distribution that is specific to the action that is selected. So it's important to note that this stationary distribution is unknown to the user beforehand. The user needs to interact with these arms to connect more information about the, these distributions. And our goal is to determine in which order to pull those arms in order to identify an epsilon optimal arm with probability at least one minus delta using as few pulls as possible. So here, the error bound epsilon confidence bound data are provided by the users. So to understand this setting a bit more, let's take a look at these uh, slaughter machines. So slaughter machines are a typical example to understand uh, multi arm bandit. Uh, so here we have small n number of slot machines, and every machine has an arm for the user to pull. And every time the user pulls an arm, he will receive a numerical reward that is sampled from a reward distribution that is specific to this machine. And still, uh, this distribution is unknown to the user, so the, uh, so the user has to interact with these machines to figure out uh, which machine is likely to output more reward. Basically, in order to you know, minimize the time the user spends on exploring these machines, the user needs an optimal strategy that he can minimize the number of samples he spends on exploring those machines in order to eventually identify the best machine, which, which means that the machine has the highest tuning of the reward distribution. <coughs> Okay, now let's see how can we apply a bandit idea to solve the MIPS problem. <clears throat> so the naive approach actually needs us to compute the inner products for all pairs of items, uh, for all pairs of uh, items and uh, the query vector. For an accurate result of the inner product, it requires us to perform multiplication operations over all capital N dimensions. However, a partial inner product only needs us to perform multiplication operations over some but not all dimensions. If the dimensionality of the problem is, is very high, then it's much easier to get a partial inner product rather than an accurate result of inner product. And uh, so, if we can still identify the best arm with knowing only the inner products, with only knowing the partial results of inner products, then that can save us a lot of time. So in other words, we want to identify the optimal vector of V star with as few multiplication operations as possible. Because uh, we, if we can save the, the time we spend on taking multiplication operations, then we could save a lot of time to reiterate this idea in the context of bandit. We view every inner product computation as an arm, and then each arm is associated with a reward list, Ri. And every entry in this reward list corresponds to the result of one multiplication operation on one dimension. So because the dimensionality is capital N, that's why we have not, we have capital N entries in the reward list. 
uh, then the chew mean of each arm is basically the average of the values from the reward list. And so every time the user pull an arm, he will receive a reward that is sampled without a replacement from the reward list. So it's worth noting that we are now using sampling without a replace replacement. So this is quite different from the traditional RID sampling we, are, we used a lot in different settings. This is the reason why we use sampling without replacing here is because it's, no, it's worth noting that so, so the, the list is finite. If we sample capital N times without replacement, we then we will go through all the entries in the list. Then we will have, I mean, uh, a, fully uh, a full understanding of the reward list. So that's why we use the sampling without replacement here. So uh, then the goal is to identify the best arm with as few posts as possible. This is equivalent to identify the optimal vector V star with as few multiplication operations as possible. Um, so there are many different uh, methods to solve multi-arm bandit pro problems. Uh, it looks like uh, we can apply any bandit approach to MIPS, and then there is nothing more to discuss. Unfortunately, this is not the case. This is because uh, traditional multi-arm bandit approaches cannot be suitable uh, for solving MIPS. To understand why, we need to take a look at this key question, which is a key component in many um, bandit approaches. So this quick question is trying to answer how many samples are needed to get an estimate mu hat of a reward distribution mu mean with specified error and confidence data. In other words, we need to determine how many samples are needed so that this inequality is satisfied. Basically, if we need less samples, then the sample complexity of our approach is better. So for traditional multi-arm bandit, the reward distribution is defined over an infinite population, which means we need to estimate the mean of distribution over infinite population. So this is a pretty difficult task, and people using use concentration bound like Hoffman inequality to solve this. However, in MIPS, the setting is a bit different. As I talked before, so the reward distribution of MIPS is defined over a finite list with size capital N, and which means we only need to estimate the mean of uniform distribution over finite population. A distinguishing point that I mentioned before is that when we sample capital N times without a replacement from the reward list with size N, then we will get a 100% accurate estimate of the of the true mean of the reward distribution. Uh, but uh, this property doesn't hold for the traditional multi-arm bandit. That's why we need a new concentration bound on finite list, because this will give us less samples that are necessary to provide an answer to that problem. And in, in this way, the, the sample complexity of our approach is much less than the traditional multi-arm bandit. Okay, now we are ready to introduce a new binary setting that is suitable for solving MIPS because uh, uh, the, the traditional multi binary is not suitable for MIPS. The new setting is called multi arm binary with bounded pools. And so in this setting, each arm is associated with a finite list of reward values. And then each, the true mean of each arm is basically the average of all values from the reward list. And every time the user's pull arm, he will receive a sample that he, uh, he will receive a reward that is sampled without replacement from the finite reward list. And the goal is the same as before. Basically, we want to identify, uh, we want to determine which order to pull arms so that we can get an epsilon optimal arm. So it's worth noting that uh, this is a general new binary setting. It cannot only be applied to model MIPS problem, it can also be applied to model some other problems such as near, nearest neighbor search. We also propose a new method to 
uh, to solve the the the, the, the multi-unbanded with bounded pool, the new setting we just introduced. Uh, so this new approach is based on the framework of median animation. Basically, it will eliminate half of the arms at, at the end of each round. So this is the chart flow of the median elimination. We start with uh, the input, which is a small n number of arms, and also the error bound epsilon confidence bound data. Both of them are provided by the user. So the first step is to initialize the estimated average reward for each for every arm with zero. And we now enter the loop. We pull every remaining arm for certain times. And then we update the estimated average reward based on the, the sample we collected at the previous step, at the previous step for every remaining arm. Then we eliminate half of the remaining arms with the least estimated reward, estimated average reward. So we repeat this steps again and again until uh, only one arm is left. <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's worth noting that at the first step of this loop, we need to pull every remaining arm for certain times. But, uh, okay. but how do we determine uh, the value for this uh, uh, certain times? Uh, Actually, it, it depends on epsilon data runner index and also the constraint encoding you are going to use. So for traditional multi unbanded we normally use uh, Hoffman inequality. However, in our new approach, which we call multi bounded ME, we use the new constraint inequality on fat and list. So here, I, I, I want to talk about the precise formula for the new constraint inequality. Uh, so, the, so the, if you are interested, you can um, go to the paper uh, actually uh, that I'm going to talk about uh, later to understand more about the precise formula for, the, for, for this uh, constraint inequality. We also extend uh, this framework to, extend, to return top K solutions rather than only the, the, the best solution. So uh, we prove several uh, theoretical guarantees about our approach. So the most important one is summarized as in 7.1. So it says that our approach is guaranteed to return epsilon optimum solution with a probability and at least one minus data. And so uh, here, epsilon and data are provided by users. So this can actually serve as a flexible knob for the user to trade off efficiency and accuracy. If the user wants a more accurate solution, then he can set the he can provide a, a smaller value for epsilon, and then the the algorithm will be guaranteed to return um, you know a, a solution that can satisfy this error bound, but the the algorithm also needs more time to run. If the user is satisfied with a less accurate solution, he can provide a larger value for the error bound epsilon, and then uh, in that case the the algorithm will run with less time. So uh, another, another property is basically says that our approach is guaranteed to be better than the naive approach. So uh, there are also several existing methods to solve MIPS. So uh, the benefits of our approach is that we can uh, address two, two limitations uh, from the existing approaches. The first one is that our approach does not have any pre-processing overhead. Uh, the second one is that our approach is can provide a weak suboptimality guarantee, which serves as a, flex, a flexible knob for the user to trade off efficiency as, and accuracy. Because as I mentioned before, the user can specify the error bound epsilon and the confidence bound data depending on the computational budget of the uh, of the user. If the user wants, I mean, different, if the user has a different computational budget, he can provide different uh, values for epsilon and data. Okay, so uh, we, uh, <coughs> we test our approach on some synthetic data sets. Uh, so the left figure is when we want the top five solution. The right figure is when we want the top 10 solutions. So the x-axis is the online speed up, 
which is the time required by naive approach divided by time required by a compared approach. And the, the y-axis is the precision, which is defined as the fraction of the uh, true top-k solutions in the return top-k solution. The red line is all approach. So as you can see that for any given value of online speed up, all approach can achieve a higher precision than other approaches. Uh, we, run, we run a similar experiment on some real-world data sets. The left figure is on the Netflix movie recommendation data set, and the right figure is on the Yahoo Music data set. So uh, very similarly, we can observe that for any given uh, online speed up, our approach can achieve higher precision than other approaches. OK, so uh, to conclude, so in this talk, I focus on uh, a particular component of, movie re of recommendation system, which is called maximum in the product search. And so for very large scale recommendation system, this could be a bottleneck. And so we uh, propose a new method that can solve the MIPS problem uh, approximately and efficiently. So there are two benefits to our new approach. First is that our new approach does not have any pre-processing overhead. The second benefit is that our approach provides a flex flexible knob for the user to trade off efficiency and accuracy so that the user can adjust I mean, the, the trade-off between efficiency and accuracy depending on the computational budget. Uh, so actually, this talk is based on uh, our paper that is uh, accepted to GPI this, this year. So uh, because I skip a lot of technical details, so if you are interested, you are more than welcome to uh, look, take a look at this, this paper. Okay, thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions.